The brain is a complicated organ which is hugely uncharted. One particular area which is little explored is that of brain health, particularly when it comes to neuromonitoring and neurocritical care. Traumatic brain injury is an injury to the brain caused due to impact to the head. There are many causes that could attribute to traumatic brain injury, and that could be assaults, accidents on the road, accidents at home, at work, or indeed sports-related injuries. Traumatic brain injury is known as the silent epidemic of the third millennium. It has serious medical implications for individuals, their lifestyles, their families, and subsequently huge socioeconomic impact. Most survivors of traumatic brain injury present permanent neurological, neuro, neurological damage. And traumatic brain injury is the largest cause of death and disability in the world's population for people under the age of 45. It is also the seventh largest cause of disability in Europe. Mild traumatic brain injury, and specifically concussion, is about 80% of all traumatic brain injury cases. Mild traumatic brain injury is caused by an impact, impulsive force, transmitted to the brain by a direct impact to the face, the head, the neck, or elsewhere in the body. The concussion itself is a form of mild traumatic brain injury, and that results in dysfunction of the brain and may result in transient loss of consciousness. It has physical symptoms like headaches, dizziness. It has cognitive deficits like memory loss, and it has emotional ch changes for example, depression and anxiety. Following severe traumatic brain injury, patients with prolonged disorders of consciousness, such as the vegetative state, do not follow the command to movement and therefore are considered unaware, completely unaware. However, imagined movements to commands in a subset of these patients been detected by techniques like functional MRI and EEG. So therefore, an accurate diagnostics of traumatic brain injury, mild traumatic brain injury, and awareness is very crucial as part of the clinical decision making, which is part of the work that we do here. Monitoring and understanding the precise hemodynamics and metabolic activity of the brain during and after injury can actually help provide us important information about the injury pathway and neuroprotective strategies. So light is a form of energy and it can be used to tell us about things. We can tell about shape, color, what something is made of, Objects selectively absorb and reflect colors depending on the chemical and molecular contents. It is harmless. We use it all the time. We can look at things and look at people and determine wellness. Light is cheap. It's easily available. We can use it almost anywhere. And more and more importantly, it is harmless. We can use it all the time. We can look at someone's face with a rash or inflammation, and because we can see the blood being increase in blood in that area to fight infection and disease, we can actually diagnose, diagnose that by just looking at the color. We can actually measure the heartbeat, and in fact, because oxygenated blood and deoxygenated blood are slightly different reds of shade, we can actually measure the amount of oxygen in your blood. We can use this light and shine it through the hand. And in fact, we have done this, and we shine light through the hand, and from this light information, we can create maps of how much blood there is in the finger, how much water there is, how much oxygen there is. And this allows us to be able to determine if somebody has arthritis, and whether they are responding to a treatment or not. I can do more than that. I can shine light through a breast, a female breast, to help and identify cancer. Different forms of cancer have different forms of blood, oxygen, and water. Angiogenesis, more blood. Hypoxia, 
I can detect these with light, so I can identify and characterize cancer without to have to take a biopsy out of that patient. But can we shine light through the head? And can we use this light to see if we can understand about brain function? When the brain functions, we call that a neural activity. When you get a neural activity, then there is a need for an increased blood flow, and that increased blood flow we call vascular signal. So this vascular signal is what I am interested in. So if I was able to shine light through the head and measure how much light is coming out, can I use this information to tell me something about the vascular signal and therefore brain function? So we are working with a, a, a group of leading scientists in Europe to particularly develop this light-based technologies. And together with algorithms, we want to develop these technologies to place into the neurocritical units to help us monitor brain function. And some of these examples I'm going to give to you now. Here's a system at our labs. What we have here is we use many light fibers, very similar to these that you would have seen on people's desks. We can actually shine light through these fibers, and we can attach these fibers, not these ones particularly, similar, to the head, and measure how much light goes in and how much light comes out. Okay, I will leave that on. So we will use fibers, we put light in the head, and we measure how much light comes out. The light coming out, and which we measure, tells us something about changes inside the head. In this example, we are placing the fibers, many fibers, on the back of the head, on what we call the visual cortex, which is as big as my hand. And what we are doing is this particular subject, we are placing them in front of a monitor, and this monitor is showing a rotating checkerboard pattern. We measure the light going to the subject's head and the light coming back out again while he is seeing this rotating checkerboard pattern. We take this data and we use computer algorithms to map the visual function on this person's brain. And this is what we get. So as the rotating pattern is moving around, we can see different parts of this subject, different parts of the brain is being activated. So, in a way, by just measuring the light coming out of this person's head and looking to see which part of the brain is being activated, I can tell where this person is looking, where they are paying attention to. But what about somebody who is not awake, somebody who is in a vegetative state? They cannot follow commands. So, how can I tell if this person is awake and whether the brain is functioning and whether they are brain dead or not? So here is the same system that I used before for the visual experiment. But now it's a slightly different experiment. So remember, neural activity leads to vascular signal. So even if there is no movement, if somebody's thinking about movement, I should be able to pick up this signal. Okay, so this time what we are doing is we're measuring the signals from someone's motor cortex on top of the head. And what we are doing is we're asking this subject to sit down and just rest for a while, and then we ask them to grip their hand, okay, repeatedly. And while they're doing this, we collect the optical data. We measure how much light goes in the head and how much light comes out. So this time, instead of showing you a picture of bright spots, I'm going to show you the graph. So remember, what's happening is a vascular signal. There is an increased blood flow, so I want to detect that. And if there is an increased blood flow, typically with metabolic activity, I should see an increase in oxygenated blood and a decrease in deoxygenated blood. So let's see what happens. So as the subject is just resting, we don't get any changes. But once they start moving the hand, I am picking the signal, an increased amount of blood, in the motor cortex of this subject. But let's go back to the person who's not awake, the person who cannot move to command. So what we are doing here instead is the subject is just resting, and we are asking them to 
think about moving their hand. And again, I'm just going to show you a graph of what we can detect. So while they are resting nothing, and when they start thinking about movement, I can get that signal. It's not as big as the actual movement, but I can detect the fact that this person is thinking about moving their hands. So, we can detect your brain function. We can detect something without you actually even doing it, but just thinking about it. We can detect that. Is this something we want? Well, in the case of detecting consciousness, yes, we do. People are using this technique to look at effects of malnutrition in children in the third world to see how it's affecting the brain function and brain development so they can help them to develop into healthy young adults. Others are using this technique to understand autism. Work is going on to detect and better understand Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, all by just using technologies like this. In one of our projects, our partners are looking to use this technique, and they are using this technique to look at preterm babies to make sure they get enough oxygen to the brain so they develop into healthy babies. We are all using light to help humans for the better. But does this mean you can control things by just thinking about it? It would be good, wouldn't it? To help people with mobility difficulties to be independent, to do things for themselves, would you want to update your social website by just thinking an emotion? I'm sad, I'm happy, I'm lonely. Would your parents be able to tell if you're lying by just looking at your face and your head? So will machines be able to read your mind? Do you want to be probed without knowing it? I've shown that I could do it potentially. So with this technology, make humans for better or for worse.